Today I'll be hiking two separate trails and I'm going to start at the Bolton Heritage Farm Rose Trail Loop. What? The Hop River Trail? I thought you said we're only doing two. Okay, well I have to take this trail to get to those two. <laughs> Water. I should mention, I have hiked this Hop River Trail before from Willimannock all the way out to Vernon, many miles over the course of a few weeks with Puppo. But today we're only taking a short trip out on it because here we are at the Rose Trail Loop going up to Heritage Farm. And I do say hike that trail. It is a very easy trail, but I had my backpack on the whole way. So it counts as a hike. <laughs> Don't take that away from me. You know, it's kind of funny. I've been looking over the posts for the class of 2025 Appalachian Trail. And so many people are trying to choose start dates where they won't be caught in the hiker bubble. They don't want to start when everyone is starting, which I don't know if you can even avoid that. But I'm not considering that at all because I'm out here alone all the time. Well, except for Barsoom, he's with me and occasionally hubby. But I'm really looking forward to companionship on the trail. So starting in a hiker bubble, no big deal to me. That's what I have to say as I rush up this hill <laughs> to get you to the top. And you may be wondering, why don't you find a hiking partner? <laughs> That's a very good question. I do occasionally put up posts in town and in hiking groups to find hiking partners to go out with. And let me just tell you how that goes. <laughs> let me just preface by saying when I post, I let people know that I'm training for the Appalachian Trail through hike so that when they show up, they're not like, why are you wearing that huge backpack when we're going on a little hike? <laughs> because I'm training. So I let them know that in the post. And then it seems to draw two types of people. Either I get people who show up and for some reason they want to compete against me and they don't hike side by side with me. They hike like 10 and 15 feet ahead of me. They never pull off and leave, but they seem to want to, like if I can go faster than her, <laughs> I too could hike the Appalachian Trail. I don't know what it is, but I don't want to hike alone. So if they show up hiking 10 feet ahead of me and we can't talk, why bother? And the other type of person I tend to draw, and I have no idea why, are people with huge problems that are just trying to find someone to talk and vent to. I don't know why they think I'm their therapist, but we get out in the middle of the woods and they start yelling and complaining and getting so loud that I don't see any animals. Oh wait, look at this tree. Hold that thought. Really pretty and kind of spooky too. But anyway, the last time I was out here with someone, I actually had to stop them and say, okay, we're out in nature and this is a healing time and a relaxing time. And yeah, we got to bring this down a notch. And they were never heard from again. They didn't want to hike with me anymore after that. Hey, but don't judge me. I was really nice about it. I was very polite. But apparently polite doesn't matter when their reason for being here is not to go hiking, but to have someone to vent all their problems to. <laughs> Truly, it happens all the time. I have no idea what that is. And then they admit to me when we're out that they can only walk like a mile or two. <laughs> well, what are you doing here? <laughs> This is a beautiful stone wall walkway. Now I'm going to speed it up a little. But imagine someone walking beside you venting all their problems. <laughs> In this beautiful place. I mean, why? <laughs> so anyway, I think it'll be really fun to hike the Appalachian Trail in a bubble and talk to people who do want to be there to hike <laughs> and who are not there to find a therapist. <laughs> I just want to pause and say, we're hiking through a meadow. Did I forget to say that before? <laughs> it's one of my favorite things. This is a beautiful walk today. And I do want to end it by saying, I have gone out here with a few people who've been really wonderful, have walked alongside me, 
we've talked a lot, but they tend to have really different schedules from me or not live nearby, so it's harder to get together. All right, I'm a little worried why there's a poisonous snake sign right here. <laughs> That's not a good sign. Oh, goodness. But in summation, I hike alone most of the time with my puppy during the week when most people can't come out hiking. And I still love it. And it's nice and quiet and I get to move at my own pace and I don't have anyone running in front of me trying to win a race. I don't have anyone screaming to the wind about all their problems. But it will be nice to hike with people with similar goals and mindsets all working together to reach that Katahdin Mount in the end. <laughs> and if I have to hike in the hiker bubble, so be it. It'll be fine. Can I just take a break from this conversation and say how wonderfully crunchy these leaves all are under my feet? <laughs> That's one of my favorite things. Uh, okay, goodbye, Meadow. I really enjoyed my time with you. Oh, and P.S. Just because you can walk 10 or 15 feet ahead of me when we're hiking, you don't have a 30-pound backpack. It means nothing. You didn't win. <laughs> Anyone who comes out of the forest after going in wins in my book. So look at this ginormous tree. Holy cow. It's so big, like you can't even see the edges when I try to fill my hand on it. Giant. How about that? So as you can see, we're heading back down the trail. Oh, here's like a little wooden bridge. There's a wooden bridge here. It's buried. <laughs> I didn't know that. We're heading back down the trail towards the Hop River Trail. This is it right here, where we came up. There's the sign to the left saying, hey, Rose Trail. And then we're gonna go back to the way we came. Yep, this way. And then right up here on the left is our next turn. And we have now arrived at the Edith Toomey Clark Trail. Ta-da, blazed in orange. And there's the sign, which it's known as basically just the Clark Trail. I read in the reviews that this is just a simple woodlands walk and not much to see here, but some people demand a lot from their trails. I'm fine with a woodland walk, not much to see. I find plenty to see in the trees and the leaves and all that good stuff. So, fine by me as long as I can find the trail. And this is very well blazed, so I can find it even with all these leaves on the ground. And check out this little stream. Oh my gosh, finding pretty things in nature reminds me of the last person I hiked with. I would stop and say, look at this leaf. It's four times the size of my hand. And look at the size of the root in that tree. And look at this cool thing. I found joy in everything. That's just how I do it. It's one of my favorite things. And she was just like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> Haven't you seen a leaf before? Ooh, see, look at that. Yeah, that right there would not have impressed her. <laughs> She found joy in nothing. Like, why are you out here? If not to check out something as beautiful as this ravine. I'm sorry, I could not get you any closer to the edge of that beautiful ravine to see those waterfalls, but Barsoom was too enamored by the water and was ready to leap over the edge and drag Mama with him because sometimes he forgets that we're tethered together by an umbilical cord. <laughs> Whoop, shortcut to mushrooms. 
and more mushrooms or toadstools, you know, get technical if you want. Oh, this is pretty over here. There's no underbrush and a little bit of grass growing and even some pine trees in the background. This makes me happy. I would say if the things along your journey hiking don't make you happy or inspire any kind of joy, like that stream over there that's leading down to a swamp, then why go hiking? Ooh, club moss or running cedar and a yellow toadstool. That's pretty. Water. Look at Barsoom waiting for me. Like, would you stop filming the water and let's go? <laughs> but the water makes me happy. It's one of my favorite things. And this is why I believe that hiking 2,200 miles of the Appalachian Trail might not be so boring for me. <laughs> I like to make the most of the little things along the way. Like this bench over here. What's this doing out in the middle of nowhere? Oh, look at Barsoom going over to read the plaque. He's so clever. What does it say, buddy? Remembering Edie Toomey Clark? Good boy. <laughs> yes, my dog reads. <laughs> so impressive. You saw it first. <gasps> and you also saw this stream coming up. Two streams in a row, that's just bonus. And I dare say that Barsoom enjoys these streams even more than I do. <laughs> that's possible. Oh my gosh, I thought that was a giant spider. <laughs> oh man. Ooh. Okay, good thing I have my pepper spray. <laughs> Rose Loop Trail over there to the right, heading back to the left on Hop River Trail in the direction from whence we came before any giant spiders capture us. <laughs> I don't know how many people will capture that reference, but here's some more water. And we're almost at the end of today's nature walk. Hopefully you enjoyed it. All the giant leaves and giant roots and big trees. <laughs> Don't criticize my joy. <laughs> the duck car. Time to check the map and see how far we've gone. Scary sound.